Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Connor, and today I'm going to be doing a book review for The Poppy War. If you guys don't know, this is the first book in a fantasy series that I think that it came out earlier this year, and it follows this girl named Ren. At the beginning of the book, she's living in this rooster province that's viewed as one of the least wealthy provinces in this country. She's living with a random family because she's a war orphan that came from somewhere else. And the family is trying to marry her off to some guy that's three times her age. She obviously does not want to do that. So to escape her fate, she figures out that if she's able to go to an academy, the highest academy, because she doesn't have the money to go to any other one, then she can avoid marrying this random old man. So at the beginning of the book, she decides she's going to full on study for this exam, try to get into this academy and avoid getting married off because she doesn't want to just get married and have babies. Obviously, she gets into this academy because that's how fantasy works. And at the academy, she's learning all about these different military tactics and everything like that because their country is on the cusp of another war, another poppy war. That's basically the premise of this book. There's also some magical things going on behind the scenes, and then as the story goes along, the magic kind of comes to the forefront a lot more. But I think that the synopsis that is on Goodreads and on Amazon gives away way too much and I don't think that you should read it. One of my pet peeves in books is when the synopsis covers a significant portion of the book, and so you're basically spoiled for the first half of the book, and only the second half is new material. This book also has a lot of trigger warnings, so if you have any triggers, I'm gonna list them off right here. There's torture, rape, substance abuse, genocide, colorism, racism, just grotesque violence, and there's probably more, but those are just the ones that I caught. So if you have a lot of triggers, I don't, recommend going into this one because a lot of things could be triggering for you. With all that out of the way, as usual with my book reviews, I'm going to go through my pros, go through my cons, give you my rating, and be done. My first pro for this book is that I just love how much was stuffed into this novel. The first 30% of the material could have been an entire book just on its own with how much stuff is going on and how much world building is happening. I was really, really loving the first section of this book. We get to learn a ton about this culture, we get to learn a ton about how this society is set up, how these academies work. I absolutely love some of the characters. I was really enjoying Ren during the first 40%. She's so dedicated. She just does not want to be told that she has to marry anyone. She doesn't want someone controlling her life. She wants to be autonomous, basically. And she's so ready to do whatever it takes. It allows her to achieve what she needs to achieve, not in a healthy way, but she's so dedicated and strong-willed in that regard. The first 30% is also very coming of age, which is one of my favorite things. That's why I love middle grade. A lot of my favorite adult fantasy involves coming of age stories. I was loving all this high fantasy stuff going on. All the magic stuff behind the scenes starts to kind of peek its way out. And I was really excited during this first section. And I just love academy settings. I thought it was really interesting. I liked how the students interacted with each other as well as the different professors. I thought it was really interesting how at the academy, if you aren't doing really well and you don't get chosen by a specific professor to continue on, then you're out of luck and you get booted out. That's a really intense way to go to school. So I was really liking all of these different elements. I really loved the world building, the mythos of this world. As I said a little while ago, I really liked the culture. The Asian elements woven into this story were done so seamlessly and I just really, really loved everything about this world. It addresses things like the different religions of the world, it addresses the different languages of the world, and how one area of this country has a different dialect than another, so it's hard to understand people even from place to place because they have such differences in language. Like when I travel to other places, even within the United States, sometimes it's hard to understand what people are saying because the accents can be so heavy. I think it's really good when like, things like periods are addressed and that it's not just people running around and fighting and doing magic. There are real life issues that are current and that are there and people have to deal with them. So the main character Ren has to deal with having periods and having to go to the bathroom at inopportune times. So I thought that that was well done and well put into the story where it wasn't overbearing and it wasn't unnecessary. It was just touched on and then we moved on. I actually really liked the grim aspect of this book. I found that I do tend to like grim dark fantasy. Not grim dark fantasy that's not done well and just is gross to be gross, but I like it when it makes sense with 
the tone of the story and what's going on. So I really liked all of these grim dark elements that are in the story. It's miserable and it's tough to live in this time period in this world. And Rin's task of winning her autonomy is very daunting because she's going up against all these children that have studied for this exam for their entire lives and she's just now starting with such a short time period before she takes the exam that it's just very stressful and terrible and I liked that dreary feeling of this book. That continues on throughout the entire thing so it's not like it's just a completely different book from the first 40-ish percent in the second 60. Those grim dark elements are throughout the entire thing. I also really liked some of the characters that were in this. Obviously I liked Ren but only in the first 40%. Ren gets compared to Quoth from The Name of the Wind. These stories actually get compared a lot in different people's reviews because they are quite similar in feeling, especially with the main character. Ren is a, a very Mary Sue character. She doesn't really have that much going on. She doesn't have that much personality. She doesn't really do anything or like anything or dislike anything. She just is. And all she's doing is trying to be the best at this academy, at this one thing. So she doesn't really have that much going on and Quoth was kind of the same way. He, he just kind of wants to go to this magic school and be the best at magic and that's like it. I think Quoth actually has a little more going on than Rin does because Quoth actually has a couple hobbies. I think he plays an instrument. He has revenge on his mind. Rin has even less. She's even more of a Mary Sue than Quoth is. I liked Kitai. I thought he was really interesting because he was not very ambitious and I liked seeing how Rin was very ambitious, really wanted to be a leader, be on top. Kitai, he just wanted to make it through and didn't really want to rock the boat too much. I liked Naja. I thought that the storyline with Naja was really interesting. So I really liked him as a character. I don't want to go too in depth because I don't want to spoil anything, but Rin and Naja's like conflict, I, I appreciated that. Another character that was interesting was this character named Alton. He's the last member of his race that are known as being very barbaric and hard to control and just kind of crazy. So seeing him dealing with being the last of his kind and all of that was interesting. I didn't really love him as a character, but I don't know if you're really supposed to. It was interesting seeing him at the beginning of the book at this academy setting where he's basically worshipped by some of the other students to seeing where he goes as the story goes along. Interesting. A lot of things were interesting. If you can hear that, it says call from shithead. My mom changed my dad's name in our address book to shithead. They are still married. <laughs> the last few characters, one was this professor, this loopy insane professor that's at the academy. I freaking loved that character. He was so fun. He actually made me laugh out loud while I was reading his parts because he's just ridiculous. He runs around, he pisses off the other professors on purpose, and I just loved it. It was so good. And the last two characters that I'll talk about are Kara, or Kara, can't remember how you pronounce that, and Ch Chagin? Chagin? I don't remember how to pronounce that either. I thought they were really interesting in how they went together but are very different. Obviously, also very vague because they don't pop up until a little later and I don't want to spoil anything. Another thing with the world building I forgot to mention was that I liked all of these different military sections. They all are known for different things and they all are desirable for different reasons by different people. I liked the military setup, I liked the cultural, political setup, I liked some of the characters, and I liked the magic. Now I'm gonna talk about some of my cons. One of my big cons is that I just didn't really care about Rin all that much because she is such a Mary Sue character. I didn't really care about her. <laughs> I could get over the Mary Sue nature of her in the first half first 40% of the book because what she was doing was really interesting. She's so driven to be the best and to make it to this academy and to succeed that I could get behind her in those things and I was really interested in those. She doesn't have very much going on like I said before so I don't really care about her as a person. I was just caring about the journey that she was taking and then in the second half of the book I could not stand her. <laughs> she becomes like a completely different person which I, I can kind of understand why that happens based off of things that happen in this book but I just didn't like her and she was so annoying. A problem could have been is that I read this as an audiobook and it could have been done by the narrator because some people that I was buddy reading this with said that the character doesn't change as drastically for them when they were physically reading it, but I read this whole thing on audiobook, that's why there's a picture right here. From the first 30-40% to the last section, she's completely different. She's so whiny, she's so annoying, she's so weak 
where in the first part she's so strong in certain ways. She's such a damsel in distress that I don't understand how this person in the first part could be the same person in the second part. It just doesn't make any sense in my brain. She's so fearful all the time. I think at one specific point in the book, it's, it happens way later on, but it's not a spoiler. <laughs> it says, fear is a luxury that she gave up a long time ago. And within 20 pages in the next chapter or something like that, it's like, she is so fearful, blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh my God, which is it? Figure it out. Are you in the middle? And sometimes you can get yourself up to that strength and do some crazy feats. What is going on? Are you scared? Are you not scared? Did you give up <laughs> the luxury of fear a long time ago? Or are you still fearful of everything? Because in the second half, she seems like she's completely fearful of everything and is so annoying about it. <laughs> and again, it could have been the narration. Like the narrator could have read all of this whiny weakness into her, but I haven't physically read it, so I'm not sure. The second half of the book also, because she's so much weaker than she was in the first half, it kind of equates human connection with weakness. The first half of the book, she doesn't have as much human connection. She's just so focused on this one thing. And then the second half, she starts to loosen up a little bit and starts to make some connections with these other people. And that's when she becomes weak. So I don't know. It, it might just be correlation, not causation, but it was so bad that it makes it look like causation. <laughs> and my other con, besides like not loving the main character or not liking the second half of the book, was that I thought that the book overall ended up being too long. I actually think that the first part of this book, the one that I really enjoyed, I would have given that part of the book five stars. It was so good, loved it. If that was it spread out just a little bit more and was made its own book, I think that that would have been the smartest decision because I loved that the most. It was so good, it was so polished, and then the second 60% of the book could have been the second book. It was almost like a, a completely different author wrote the first part and the second part. But overall, in terms of keeping it all together, I think that at around 70% is when I started to just be ready for the book to be over. I kept looking to see how much time left I had in each chapter and in each part. Like I kept checking every 20 minutes to see how much more I had left because I wanted it to be over and that's not a great thing to be doing. <laughs> had one neutral that I wanna mention is that this book is very dense, so it reads very slowly. That could be a contributing factor for why I wasn't loving it so much at the very end and how I was ready for it to be over. It is a slower read, so know that before going in. So overall, I did enjoy The Poppy War. I think it does a lot of things really well. I think that Ong has created a very concrete world and I love everything that's gone into it. I just wish that Ren, the main character, had been more fleshed out and more able to be invested in. And I think that that was really what brought down the second half for me was that I just hated Ren <laughs> in the second half. So overall, I ended up giving this book three and a half stars. It was a little disappointing because I was really excited for it going in and I really wanted to love it. But then I had a few things that held me back. That sucks, but I do recommend it for people that are looking for more Asian inspired fantasy and some grim dark. I think it has some really good bones and I'm very curious to see how the series will continue on. But this first book and how it was, I wish I had loved it more. So that's gonna be my review of The Poppy War. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below if you've read this book. Did you have any similar thoughts to me? Did you have very opposing thoughts to me? Let me know anything you want down below and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.